this is another one of those situations where some of these options are gonna be for slightly more advanced users. So in some cases, if you don't know what some of the options here mean, you probably shouldn't be playing around with them anyway. We'll take a look at a few. So we're gonna go through these one by one. URL options. This falls in line with what I was just saying. If you're not sure what add store code to URLs or auto redirect to base URL means, then just don't worry about them. In 99% of cases, you're not gonna really need to do anything here. So we're not gonna worry about these for a basic store. We're gonna keep these settings just as they are. We're gonna use the system values. Same with search engine optimization. And this is kind of misleading because this doesn't really get too much into search engine optimization, but use server rewrites. We're just gonna keep this as yes, use system value. I may have unselected that from earlier. If yours was selected or unselected, don't worry about that. Just keep yes here. Now, base URLs, let's open this. This is simply your domain. And in case you ever change domains, you'll want to change your base URL here so the website basically knows where you are and what it should use for links in various areas on your website. The rest of these we're gonna leave alone base URLs secure. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to leave all this alone. And then we have things like default pages. We're not going to worry about the rest of these settings either. Again, there are some cases where you may need to change some of these settings if you're a more advanced user. But for a beginner, you should just leave all of these alone. Obviously, if you know what you're doing, and there's something you need to change here, then that speaks for itself. But again, in 99% of cases, you're not gonna to wanna to do anything here unless you're, again, an advanced user, a developer, and there's something specific that you need to change, in which case, you'll already know what you need to change. Let's take a look at design. This is another area that's really just for advanced users. If you know what a robots.txt file is, then you know what kind of things that you may wanna put in here. If not, it's perfectly fine just to leave it alone. Note, this also is a little bit misleading. This doesn't really have anything to do with the design of your website. This simply has to do with, as it says here, search engine robots crawling your site. If you don't do anything here, your site will be just like any other site on the web, just like 99% of websites, and search engine robots will crawl your site in a normal fashion. Let's go to currency setup, and we're going to open up currency options here. Now this should be pretty self-explanatory. The base currency, this is the currency that essentially you are gonna do business in. Now you can, as you can see down here, allow other currencies to be used when placing orders on your site, but you're doing business in maybe the US dollar. And so that's what the base currency for your website is. If you're using something else, obviously, you'll just change it to whatever else you're using. I'm gonna be using the US dollar. And then you have the default display currency. Again, in 99% of cases, this will be the same as your base currency. But it's possible that maybe you're running a store and you're located in the US, but 99% of your customers are maybe in uh, Europe and they're gonna be using the Euro. So you want them to see prices in Euros so they're not confused and they, so they know exactly how much things will cost for them. That might be a case where these two things will be different. But again, in most cases, this will be the same. This is simply the currency that's used on the front end of your website that visitors will see. And again, here we have allowed currencies. You can select other currencies besides your base currency that users can pay with. And down here we have various settings for, these are the various ways that your website is going to update the exchange rate. Now, the options we have here for Yahoo Finance Exchange, Fixer.io and Web Service X, don't really do much as far as that goes. This is just for connection timeouts when they're trying to get information from these services to determine exchange rates. 
And in most cases, you're not gonna wanna do anything with these right here. But if we look at scheduled import settings, this is for automatically updating exchange rate information. Again, if you accept multiple currencies on your website. So if you want to have scheduled import settings, again, if you want the exchange rate to update automatically on your website, you would change this to yes, select the service that you would like to use, select the time of day that you would like the conversion information to be updated, the frequency, daily, weekly, or monthly, probably no reason not to go with daily here. You should probably use this in most cases. Then you have error email recipient, which means if there's a problem getting exchange information and updating the exchange rate information on your website, if you're accepting multiple currencies, then whatever email you put in here will receive a message saying, hey, there was a problem. Magento was not able to update the conversion information. You need to do something to fix that. The error email sender is simply the email address that it will show up as coming from. And then if you want to change the email template, you can do that, but we're not gonna dig into that. For our site, we're just gonna keep things basic and just use one currency. So I'm gonna change no here. One other quick note about scheduled import settings is you absolutely have to have cron running on your site properly or on your server rather in order for this to work. So if you don't know what that means, that's kind of one of those things that's a little bit outside of the scope of this tutorial. You need to look up cron and this works differently on different servers. You need to find out how cron is set up on your web host. And this is another reason why I do recommend once again, using uh, Nexus or some host that really is very familiar with Magento and offers Magento specific packages because they'll have cron set up perfectly for your website so you don't have to worry about it. It should be running just fine and in a way to where this information is updated automatically if you have it enabled.